to you in your in your job search. But it is a pleasure to have uh, Michael Chapman with us today, all the way from the Raleigh Durham Airport. Uh, so, uh, how how often do you hear a speaker come to you from the airport? So. Uh, uh, Michael is a subject matter expert and consultant and public speaker on the Obamacare information and solutions, health and health, as well as just healthcare in general, healthcare insurance and employee benefits. Uh, he's helped individuals as well as companies uh, grow revenues, uh, you know, manage uh, costs and things like that when it came to healthcare. Uh, and he has uh, extensive international leadership experience. He's actually you know, C-suite level uh, experience. And so it's a pleasure to have him uh, on with, I know that I have personally benefited from his services when I was in job search several years back. So it's a pleasure to have Mike with us today. So Mike, uh, I will turn it over to you and uh, allow you to share. I don't know if you have any, any screen, any slides to share or anything like that. Uh, but anyway, it, it's a pleasure to have you and I'll let you take it away. And I may I may turn my camera off or whatever and things, but I I will still be here. So. All right. Hold on one second here. Sure. I'm going to share. Can you can you all see my mask? Yes, we can. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Well, I just wanted to prove that I'm at the Raleigh Durham Airport. If you look around, you can see. Terminal. Yeah. I'm, I've got a flight in about an hour and a half, two hours, noon, so this will work out great. And I really enjoy uh, these, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today. I'm, this may sound a little bit like uh, those used car sales pitches. It is not intended. I, my job is to educate and help you, and if you, if you value my services, great. But you're going to learn some things that may help you, but... This uh, has been a very crazy ride for the last year in uh, healthcare and uh, in the world in general. And um, with the change in administration comes a new philosophy. And I want to make sure you can y'all can hear me okay. Yes. Okay, great. If at any point, because the internet here is unstable and there's liable to be a gate announcement or something, I tried to find a corner where they wouldn't be. If, if I need to repeat something, please let me know. Uh, the reason this might sound like a little bit of a, a used car uh, commercial that you'd see on late night TV or maybe a mattress, uh, a mattress sales is because uh, under the new administration, the, uh, there was an act, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act that was approved March 9th. And uh, it's basically offering almost free health insurance to the majority of Americans. And it's not just plans for the Affordable Care Act. I'll get into that. But um, I had a present. This is not too long ago, two months ago. It was announced uh, that there would be an opportunity for anybody that did not enroll during the Affordable Care Act open enrollment that ended December 8th or somewhere about there, that people would have another opportunity to enroll. And uh, it's there's been further, uh, and that was prior to the passage of the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, that I'm going to refer to it, that uh, further incentivizes people to enroll. It's been very effective. Even before ARPA, uh, half a million people signed up uh, for health insurance from uh, February through forward, which which is good for, for the country. Uh, the more people that have access to health care and affordable health care, the better. I'm not going to go into a little bit about this, but these are all the kinds of things I do. I uh, bring experience, and um, I'm very hands-on with my clients, and I, I love being able to present information that can benefit people. This is kind of like my niche. Uh, it, really, the you're going to, uh, this is not a pitch by any means, but uh, a five minute phone call, whether you want to work with me or not, a five minute phone call or text, uh, I cannot respond to emails quickly enough, but a five minute phone call or text can, uh, I can get the information I need to make recommendations for you. 
and I share my information willingly. Normally this time of year, I am uh, vacationing or uh, preparing for the next year. I put about 500 hours a year into uh, recertification for every health plan and Medicare plan in Texas and in other states. And um, uh, also other benefits research in, in healthcare. Normally this is the fourth year, but uh, because of the pandemic, it's caused a lot of things to change. This this is you know probably no surprise to you guys that some of this is regurgitation of what you already know. Uh, telehealth, retail primary care, uh, remote work, that's all impacted healthcare. And just ask your doctor how much uh, things have changed if you've been in the doctor's office. And something about uh, uh, lead employer, for many people, this might have been the first time. You may have already signed up for the first time for your own insurance. I'm going to go through some basic concepts first. Insurance is a different thing than healthcare. Insurance is a mechanism for spreading and sharing risk. It goes back to the guilds of the mid of, of the 16th century, and has been, um, you know, highly highly regulated and uh, controlled uh, by state, federal, and local levels. You have different types of insurance: employer insurance and individual insurance, and uh, then a number of uh, government. Uh, coverage either through the military, uh, through Medicaid and other states, et cetera. And the larger the, the larger the groups, the more uh, the less risk there is because the risk is spread. But when you're purchasing in for, uh, individual insurance for yourself, under normal times, it's more expensive. However, because of the subsidies through the American Rescue Plan Act, you're going to see that's not the case. Uh, now, I. This goes back to February. Individual insurance premiums may be cert subsidized, Michael Sam, based on age, income, and household size. Uh, however, due to the American Rescue Plan Act or ARPA, uh, anybody that has received one week of or more or one day or more of unemployment benefits for this year would be eligible for uh, a subsidized premium for plans to the Affordable Care Act. But uh, kind of like the amazing Ginsu Knives uh, commercials from late night TV, I'm going to say, but wait, but wait, there's more. Uh, some, and I'll, I'll say that uh, for uh, a minute. But now, how you make decisions, though, you know, you may have one person in your family that has pre-existing conditions. People that are older are going to pay more, no matter where you get the insurance. Uh, if you have a job, if you're close to landing a job like Joe, you know, you, uh, now even though Joe's a contractor, if you're going to be a, a W-2, you may have a time horizon that's relatively short. So there's less risk in that. And then there is a, uh, the issue of a working spouse. There is something that has been labeled uh, the family glitch when it comes to plans to the Affordable Care Act. And what that means is that if either hu husband or wife or spouse uh, has coverage through an employer plan, then you're not eligible for a premium tax credit. And that remains the same even under, under the American Rescue Plan Act. Now, generally, uh, there is no enrollment plan for plans that don't cover pre-existing conditions. Plans through the Affordable Care Act typically or traditionally have had an open enrollment period uh, or, or a special enrollment period, for instance, a termination, death, divorce, marriage, remarriage, uh, birth of a child as a period when one can enroll outside of the open enrollment period. However, uh, that has changed. Under the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, well, first prior to that, it was announced that there would be an uh, enrollment period of February 15th to May 15th when anybody could sign up for a plan through the Affordable Care Act. And that's great. That's what's led to over half a million people uh, getting insurance that didn't have it before uh, across the country. And it gives people a chance, an opportunity, if they're not happy with their coverage. Can you hear me, Mike? Can you hear me okay? No. Okay. I'm going to wait for that gate announcement to go by. Yeah. 
Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little loud. <laughs> yeah, I've got. I even have a, a microphone attached. You know, a good microphone attached to my laptop. But I got to wait for that gate announcement to stop. Oh. And I got to listen to it in three languages: English, French, and Spanish. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next slide here because you've seen that. And I'm going to put this on there. Okay. Now, there we go. Uh, there's a, uh, as a result of ARPA, there's an extension of that special enrollment period. Anybody that wants to can sign up for a plan between now at, uh, and uh, September 15th. And uh, for most, even if you signed up, uh, first of all, uh, in the chat, if you have signed up for a plan through the Affordable Care Act already, uh, put a one in the chat. I assume some people already have. Let's see, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to admit somebody here. All right. So it looks like six or seven have already signed up for a plan through the Affordable Care Act. Right? Now, did you know that you're now eligible? Oh, seven. So we're, we're pushing on 10 out of the 40 people on this call. Sorry, we're getting the three languages deal going again. Now, even if you enrolled already, You'll be able to, per, let me go back up. Even if you are already, I can help you reduce your premiums further. Uh, what I found uh, beginning, uh, beginning last week, I, I re-enrolled all of my existing clients. And, uh, you know, there's a, a few hundred. Uh, it took quite a bit of work, but I can tell you that anybody in their 50s is liable to save about another 100 bucks a month per person. So if you're a family of say so three or four of that can add up. Now, what ARPA does, it provides a, an additional premium tax credit retroactive to January 1st. So if you're um, trying to conserve cash uh, and you want to apply that to your premiums, let me know. I can uh, have that. We've missed the, herd, we've missed the deadline for June 1st. That was uh, April 15th, but you can still get that in place to start for June 1st, if you uh, take action by my by May 15th. So, what the government says, and I'll have to take them on their word on this point, uh, is that about 60% of Americans will now qualify for a quote unquote free bronze plan through the Affordable Care Act. For a silver plan, another 60% will pay for a, a silver plan, and uh, it may cost about 10 bucks a month. Now, the advantage of a silver plan is that you're likely to be eligible for what's called cost sharing. And what cost sharing does, it uh, substantially reduces your out-of-pocket expenses, your, pre your, uh, your co-pays, your deductibles, how much you pay when you go to uh, the doctor or the hospital. So a silver plan uh, costs a little bit more, but the quality of the plan uh, is, uh, uh, your, your risk is lower. See the same doctors and hospitals, there's no difference in networks, but it can make quite a bit of difference in terms of the risk you, uh, you have with a, if you select a silver plan. So if, for instance, during the Affordable Care Act, you signed up for a bronze plan, well, now's an opportunity. You might actually now be able to upgrade for a silver plan and it'll cost you less out of pocket every month. And one more thing, let's say you don't qualify for premium tax credit. And this is the weight butts more, like the amazing gifts unites. Unemployment compensation, okay? Um, additional premium tax credits, if you have one day of premium tax credit, uh, if you have one day of unemployment compensation, you're eligible for a premium tax credit back to January 1st. Now, this part hasn't been clarified how they're going to do it. Uh, so 
I'm waiting for guidance on this, but uh, you, you'll be able to get that started beginning June 1st. It gets better, but even more and confusing. Now, if you were involuntarily term terminated between uh, these time periods, in other words, terminated, fired, canned, uh, rift, uh, not your decision to quit, you are eligible for free COBRA. Nada, zero cost between April 1st and uh, September. So even if you turn down COBRA, you would be eligible for free COBRA during these months. Now, imagine if you were a benefits person or you were in HR. Imagine the complexity of now trying to contact every terminated employee uh, this year and let them know that, hey, if you want, you can now get your insurance for free. And then trying to explain to your boss that you have to do this and the company has to pay the COBRA premiums and then get reimbursed eventually through tax credits from Uncle Sam. So this creates a tremendous amount of complexity and uh, confusion for any HR folks in the room. Uh, but it's true. And there will be model, there are actually, just published late this past week, there are model notices that employers must use to send out to terminated involuntarily terminated employees. They must send this out uh, by the end of May 31st with instructions on how they can elect to uh, get free COBRA. And uh, this, will be, this will be a good deal. Uh, there's no value judgments here, okay? If you're out of work, anything you can do to get, um, to, get uh, to reduce your out-of-pocket expenses when you don't have income coming in is a good thing. Now, this is, this is muddled. So employees must, uh, you'll actually be able to get retroactive COBRA, back retroactive to May 1st. Let's say you get in an auto accident, heaven forbid, in the month of June. Uh, you could actually decide to sign up for COBRA retroactive to May 1st and have those expenses, uh, submit those expenses for reimbursement after the fact. Chances are you won't get the, the bill by then. But it, this, is, this has never been done before so, uh, or never even contemplated. And the, the law was passed before anybody worked out the details. But I guarantee you people are working really hard uh, to figure out how to make this happen. Uh, now, this will be, you know, the uh, old military term FUBAR. I won't, uh, I won't go into details, but employees must <laughs> let the employer know in June that they accept the free COBRA. Employees must uh, get their medical expenses reimbursed to COBRA. It does not cover expenses out of this time period. And the other thing that happens, uh, and I've studied this, is that let's say you have a, a other coverage. You have coverage through your spouse. Remember that family glitch that I told you about? You're not eligible for this. What if you have a, a plan through the Affordable Care Act that you signed up for during open enrollment period and you had some significant expensive uh, medical expenses racked up this year? Well, if you elect free COBRA, you're starting your deductible over. So there are... You know, there hasn't been any uh, guidance given to uh, to Americans as to where the where and when this is good for you. Also, if if you have a substantial premium tax credit uh, already and you're paying zero for a bronze plan or ten dollars a month for a silver plan, why in the world would you want to get free Cobra if you've had medical expenses? So you've got to think this through. Uh, and, you know, this isn't the kind of thing that you, most people care about until they have some expenses. Or, you, you know, the ARPA, the publicity of ARPA has been, uh, has been low, uh, pro probably because it's so confusing they don't quite know how to communicate it yet. But let's say you didn't, the other, the other reason, though, I'm going to flip this now. 
let's say you don't, let's say you had uh, this year, and again, it's based on your 2021 income estimate. Let's say you didn't qualify, you don't qualify for premium tax credit this year. Well, you can at least sign up for COBRA if it makes sense. You haven't had uh, a lot of medical expenses and get reimbursed for COBRA for the months of April through September. So again, this is very murky. There will be additional guidance uh, coming out on this. Um, and you just have to know that uh, this is a fluid situation, but it, it's going to be better for some, but not necessarily better. For, it may be bad, even though some of these things are free, it may not be better. So you got to you gotta think this through, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Now, I mentioned the family glitch. Uh, the other thing is, I know there's a number of people, my, myself included, because I love what I do. Uh, there's another, there's another group of people, and uh, uh, people that are working beyond 65. I would say, in our generation, most people were working beyond age 65 because their 401k became a 21k, or just because they love what they do. In the area of, uh, co it doesn't help you in Medicare, but I'll, I'll talk about something else with me. Uh, Medicare, uh, here's who's eligible. You have to be age 65, individuals under 65 who have been on Social Security disability income for two years or more get Medicare as well. When you apply, when you leave, when you terminate from an employer, you have, uh, you have to sign up for Medicare. Medicare Parts A and Part B cover 80% of your medical expenses, but there's no cap or limit on the remaining 20%, and there's no coverage for, for prescriptions. This is what you buy from Uncle Sam. For most people who have worked 10 years or more, the, the uh, Part A is quote-unquote free. That's what your payroll taxes have covered. Part B will cover will cost about 150 bucks. But you can cover all of your medical expenses for 300 bucks a year. Not bad compared to what you would, and it's great coverage because for 300 bucks you can literally have uh, zero medical expense for the year, other than a couple hundred dollars out of pocket for medical expenses and whatever you pay for your prescriptions. However, if you're getting free Cobra uh, or a bronze plan for uh, for, for free, why would you want to pay? Well, the reason is that, let me get further, COBRA is not, is not credible coverage at age 65. You have to enroll in Medicare within six months of termination, or you will not only be subject to a late enrollment period, okay, you won't be able to enroll in Medicare until the following July, and you'll be responsible for any expenses but you'll also be assessed for the rest of your life late enrollment premium penalties. So anybody on the group that is uh, 65 or older, be real cautious about what you see on TV from uh, uh, about ARPA or other options. And remember that uh, the uh, COBRA is not creditable. Now, if you've made a lot of money, IRMA uh, will increase the cost of your Part B premiums, uh, could be substantially. If your individual income is more than $85,000 average for the last two years or twice of that per couple. And just like any other forms of income, withdrawals from retirement funds, bonuses, uh, sale of real estate, uh, uh, stimulus money, that all counts as income. So that you can't hit that. However, normally you have one opportunity. Not, not, you do have, if you're a Texan, or if you live north of the Red River and uh, live in Oklahoma, you still have the opportunity to sign up um, or to change your Medicare plans as a result of that horrible ice storm we had, uh, what was that, about a month ago, right? So uh, there is a, uh, an emergency, a FEMA a special enrollment period if, if you need to enroll or change uh, your Medicare plan right now, but that's coming to an end uh, at the end of this month. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to talk about Social Security. I'll be happy to answer questions. 
Now you have all these things. Whether you're a COBRA administrator, a former uh, HR, you, you're going to get it. You're going to get more misinformation than you normally do from uh, colleagues, uh, networking colleagues, friends, and families, because this uh, ARPA Act, it's passed. It's a law, and it's only partially implemented. But there's some things here that could save people really real money. You know, if you're a family of four and you're in your 50s, you're, you could be spending $2,000 a month very easily on medical expenses or more than you do on a mortgage. Well, you could sign up for a plan through the Affordable Care Act. If you're eligible for a premium tax credit, it can now be even further uh, cheap, and the government will even throw in some free steak knives if you want to make COBRA free for the month of April through September, if you want to. Now, how you do this, uh, you can do this yourself. You can go online for quotes. You can go to healthcare.gov and try to do this. Uh, you may have already signed up at healthcare.gov through uh, uh, during open enrollment. But knowing when to do this and when, when it's to your benefit and when it's not to your benefit, not so easy to do. And I'd, I'd be happy to help any... Uh, anybody that has questions about this, I can answer all these questions. Uh, you know, just knowing this and having a, a rational conversation with your spouse and having a, a third-party expert, and I study this stuff, knowing, uh, knowing what you should do, you can implement it later, but there's nothing, you know, there's nothing more stressful on a marriage than a loss of a job and watching your life savings uh, drain during a, a job search. So having these kind of discussions, uh, I'd be more than happy to do it. I make myself available up until about 7 p.m. evenings, and I'm usually available. This is really my first flight in over a year and a half. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a, you know, feel free to text me or call me. I'm... Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you have, and you know if you if you have this kind of discussion or you want to do a, a phone conference with your spouse, you, you know you don't have to implement it now. Like I said, it'll go retroactive to the first of the year for the premium tax credit. It can be applied to premiums beginning uh, with the, your June premium payment, or if you elect free Cobra, uh, it, you'll know to be on the lookout for. Um, for a model notice from your former employer or their co more likely their COBRA administrator sometime towards the end of May. This is, uh, this is it's, it's the craziest thing that I have seen in my almost 20 years in, the, uh, in uh, serving in this area. But it really, you know, there are all kinds of different options. I can guarantee you that I only touched on the things that are new but I have an expression I like to use, nothing is good except by comparison. And I, you know, unlike if you, uh, if you go online or uh, uh, worse yet, go on, um, make a call to, a, to uh, an out-of-state uh, call center, they're, they're going to represent maybe two or three of the different options. And uh, they're going to be in sales mode. What I do is I really help uh, help people know, okay, here are the options. Here's what I recommend. Here's why. COBRA may be good, but if you had any medical expenses, does somebody in the family have uh, severe or uh, chronic or expensive or life-threatening conditions that need one option versus another? I'll do all that. And, uh, it, it just starts with a five-minute phone call, and then I follow up with emails. And then I, we can rationally discuss discuss things and really you know maximize your ARP, ARP opportunity I really hope everybody takes advantage of this information and uh, it can mean substantial savings if you can go uh, you know for the balance of this year it actually for the whole year since it's retroactive uh, the tax credits don't help you until you do your taxes for next year uh, April of 2022 but if you, uh, if I can help you apply that to your premiums beginning June, then that reduces your out-of-pocket expense, you know, for a family of four 
for a couple, it could be uh, three or four hundred bucks for the rest of the year. That's that's liable to be uh, more than a couple thousand dollars in cash flow savings. Now, um, I'm going. I'm recording this. Uh, I'm going to. I have a YouTube. You can look it up. You can uh, go to my YouTube channel uh, under my name, uh, or if you don't have it, just text me and I can send you the link. If you uh, want, you can I'll, I'll, you can text me. But if you prefer to look at what's out there, just to enter your information, you can if you can go to this link, this link here. For if you're under age 65 or if you're Medicare here, and then I'll I'll follow up with you. Just to, that helps get some of the information that I need. But we still need to have a phone call first. And you know, again, I'll go through this. Happy to help. Uh, one more thing, don't underestimate the length of your job search. And uh, usually companies today have a uh, two-month two two waiting period unless you're working for a, you know, a top-tier company. And uh, the older you get, the more likely you are to work for a smaller and more entrepreneurial company that will, will have a, uh, uh, a waiting period before you're el eligible for coverage. But don't uh, don't you know like Joe is uh, consider alternate careers 1099 uh, and other options and the thing is consider what's the best return on your time invested if when you're an independent uh, a business person return on time invested is one of the key metrics and I can guarantee it trying to chase what happens with regulations and healthcare and insurance is something that is not a good uh, and a good way to invest your time. Uh, concentrate on your job search or exploring other income streams. Uh, that's that's what's going to uh, going to be the best use of your time. And you know we're still in the first phase. I know there's a number of states in uh, the Midwest that are uh, having their fourth uh, spike in COVID. For fortunately, in Texas, that's not the case. Um, you know, the, this um, is going to be very expensive, uh, which will eventually be paid back in taxes. But we got to get our, we got to dig ourselves out of this pandemic. Uh, who would have thought a year and a half ago we would be going through this? Now, I am one of the most connected guys in LinkedIn. I'd be more than happy to make introductions or, or help. You can. Uh, uh, Link, send me a LinkedIn connection I'll be, if there's somebody that I can introduce you to where I have a personal uh, connection, I'll be happy to, to uh, connect you. And that's my uh, cell number. Either number, I'll get a text to either one of these numbers. Uh, I cannot respond to emails, especially today while I'm, uh, while I'm traveling, but you can text me and I'll, I'll get uh, get back to you either uh, between flights or uh, later tonight. And, uh, thank you for your time. I'm going to shut up for a minute. Hopefully, yeah. you heard most of that over the announcement, the gate announcements. But what kind of questions do y'all have? Yeah, we do have a few out here in the chat window here. I'll try to get through some of them. One is a question. I'm going to going from the most recent to the earliest because some of them sure. may be duplicating. This is. Uh, does this apply to those who were laid off in 2020, so started COBRA in 2020? You have to. Well, if you're on COBRA for this uh, April through September, yes. It won't help you. If, it won't help you. If, but if you were on COBRA and COBRA ended, or you ended COBRA, it won't help you. But if you're on COBRA for the months of uh, April through September, you get, you get money coming back to you. But that money coming back to you may not help you. If you're you've had a lot of medical expenses because your deductibles start over, so just know that there's some things that may or may not be good for you, but generally, freeze pretty good, especially if you didn't qualify for premium tax credit this year. Yeah. <clears throat> Another question comes up: What if your COBRA runs out before the end of the year? If your COBRA runs out from the end of the year, now again. This is before the end of the year. Yeah. yeah, it could change again. You know, this is as of uh, what's today's date? April nineteenth. Uh, April nineteenth. Okay. You saw half of what I 
half of my presentation from Fred the Worry, and uh, we just threw in the extra steak knives and the other stuff less than two months later. So this could happen again, but as of right now, the only period where the uh, where the cobra would be free would be the months of April through September. However, the uh, the additional premium tax credits you could take advantage of now. So if you have not had a lot of if you have not had a lot of uh, medical expenses, it might actually serve you to terminate COBRA early if you're paying for COBRA or if your COBRA runs out, if you're only paying 10 or, you know, the un because if you're eligible for unemployment uh, as much as one day, you're going to be eligible for that tax credit. It may actually pay you to go on to an Affordable Care Act plan versus taking advantage of uh, free COBRA if your COBRA terminates for a couple of days. But it's hard to make generalities. You understand? Uh, each each person's situation is a little bit different, and you know the rules of the the rules of the road could change next month. All right. And someone says, so if our spouse is working, does that mean I'm not able to sign up for ARPA? If your spouse is working for a company that offers group health insurance, then you are not eligible for premium tax credit. That's the family glitch, unfortunately. However, if you're on COBRA, my understanding is that you are eligible for the free COBRA, but you're not eligible for the premium tax credit under the Affordable Care Act plans. Did that make sense? Sorry for the three languages. So uh, you can see that it's uh, it's confusing, right? I like to normally I would have this more buttoned up, but the the legislation itself is not buttoned up. But I can tell you that there's many many benefits here for for. Uh, job seekers uh, the you know the the stim you know what is it three point one trillion dollars uh, there's other things like a death benefit for uh, for people that uh, pass due to COVID there's a lot of things in the stimulus bill that we're still digging up but I just wanted to focus on what would be most relevant for for y'all yeah, another another couple of questions that popped in. Mm -hmm. uh, one person has commented, "I I am eligible for Cobra starting March 21, but I decided not to take it, it being too expensive. Am I still eligible to get coverage from Cobra after April 20? I'm, I'm assuming it's April 2021, without paying for March 21." Well, uh, let me let me go back. If you were eligible for Cobra in 2021. If you passed up if you passed up Cobra in 2020, the answer is no. Now that could change. Okay, the law could they could they could modify the legislation, but as of right now, as for people that were eligible for Cobra and were involuntarily terminated this year. Yeah, well, it looks like this person was was terminated last month, so they're saying they're eligible for Cobra starting last month. Yes, March of twenty one. Yes, actually, uh, you will. That's you will get a model notice sometime. It'll be. It must by law be mailed out sometime by the end of May. Uh, assuming that they have your correct address, you'll get it no later. I would think than the first week of June. You have to the end of June to sign up, and it will go retroactive to April if you want to sign up for it. Yeah, and I guess your question is whether they would have to pay for for March. Yes. Uh, well, no. They they'd have the chance to sign up for. My understanding is it would it would start in April. So free Cobra in April. Okay. Uh, another question is. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, can one have ACA and free Cobra to, to combined or together? Well, <laughs> that would be good. I don't blame you for asking. That sounds like something I would ask for. Uh, 
nothing would surprise me at this point, but the answer is no. Uh, you kind of have to determine which one you want. And also, there's no benefit to you uh, since the benefits don't coordinate. Okay. Uh, and, another, and you may have already uh, answered this one, uh, but uh, it says, if you were laid off in 2020 uh -huh. and have been paying for COBRA since July of 2020, are you eligible for this program to pay for your COBRA in 21? My understanding is you have to be involuntarily terminated in 2021. Okay, However, yeah. you could get a zero premium bronze plan or a, like a possibly qualify for a $10 a month silver plan, uh, which would substantially reduce what you're paying for COBRA. But there may be somebody, now I'm just talking about, I'd be careful about talking about just dollars and cents here because there's a difference in the quality of the networks. And I say, quality is a harsh word. Uh, there's a difference in the networks. COBRA plans tend to be PPO, preferred provider organization networks. A lot of doctors, and you can choose to go out of network. All of the plans in Texas through the Affordable Care Act plan are either HMO or EPO, which means that there's no out of network coverage. So you may have, or you may have somebody in your family that has a life threatening or expensive or chronic. Uh, health condition that needs access to specialists. Well, changing to a, uh, from COBRA to a plan through the Affordable Care Act plan, you may not have still have access to your specialist that you need, but you can also blend it. Again, you can unbundle. So maybe that one person remain who has a life-threatening condition can stay on COBRA while everybody else can go on the Affordable Care Act. So that's you know, there, that's where you have to, slice, and that's where I can help you slice and dice this down to, to know what's best for each person in your family, because it's not just about dollars and cents when it comes to health care. Another question has come in is, a uh, couple here, is my COBRA premium is due, uh, my, my COBRA premium due for 121. Should I pay or wait for notice from the company? You should pay it. Yeah, don't don't risk uh, having because that notice won't get to you to maybe the first week of June, so don't have a lapse in coverage. Now you, you may want to consider other options though uh, that may be almost as affordable uh, because that premium tax credit and the cost sharing through a silver plan can be uh, you know if you don't have a if you don't have a if you have access to a premium tax credit uh, through uh, being eligible for unemployment, it may be almost as good. Uh, the network may be good enough, and it may provide every bit as much benefit or more. Because that okay. cobra, that cobra, that free cobra is only for four months. Okay, so after that four months, you're back up to sticker shock of cobra. And the, uh, I, I assume it. I, I have to make an assumption here. This isn't in the law, but I have. To I have to assume that when the uh, quote unquote free COBRA expires, that they will extend an, another special enrollment period that you can go onto an Affordable Care Act plan. But again, your deductible starts over then. So, it, you know, you have to, you have to watch your risk because you could end up uh, risking, you know, uh, Starting over again in a brand new deductible with more with more out of pocket expense risk. All right, another a couple other questions here. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Is uh, is the doc is a network of doctors that accept ACA anticipated to expand under the new administration? Uh, it really has no bearing on that unless uh, actually no the uh, the government has uh, uh, de delayed uh, reduction. It's called sequestration. They have delayed reductions in uh, payments to doctors uh, through Medicaid. Uh, it really has no bearing on uh, uh, on plans through Texas. What, what the bearing is, is just do the doctors 
need the cov need the uh, need the revenue. Uh, I have found over the last four years a steady increase in the number of doctors overall, and that's a, that's dangerous to make a generalization, but an increase in the number of doctors. But if you just send me your, the easiest thing to do, because I have access to some services that I use, just send me your list of doctors, and I can tell you which ones are in which networks, and you know if they're important doctors. That, that may be the determination of whether you want, quote unquote, free COBRA or a plan through the Affordable Care Act, just what doctors you'd have available and specifically which insurance company. Okay. Another question here is, uh, so based on notifications being sent by May, May 31st, if I opt for COBRA, would the coverage go back to April 1st? Uh, that's my understanding. And I could be proven wrong uh, by May 1st, or by, by June 1st, rather, but that's, that's the way the law is written now. Okay. Another question is, so your monthly payments will not be altered until June on an HMO government health care plan? Uh, monthly payments will be credited back to January, so you would end up with a credit balance for June? Uh, these are questions. Yeah, let me explain that. Um, ARPA, uh, anybody that has a plan through the Affordable Care Act and qualified for premium tax credit is now eligible for an additional premium tax credit back to January 1st. However, you cannot apply it to your premiums now. Uh, last week, you could have uh, if you called me, I could have gotten it for uh, to start May 1st, but that deadline's passed. But I can help you start it for June 1st, and you still get the back to January 1st through the end of May in the form of a tax credit when you do your taxes next April or if you file an extension next July. But you know, cash is king right now while you're in transition, so. If you can save three or four hundred bucks for a couple or a family, uh, you know, uh, starting right now and cash outflow, uh, that's probably more beneficial to you than the tax credit. The money's the same. I mean, you'll get the form of the money regardless based on your actual what you actually earn for the year. But right now, that's this is a great way to reduce your your uh, cash flow. Uh, another person uh, put in here, ACA sent me an email to reapply because I, I could save money. Should I call you first? Well, <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> That's my business. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a salesy type, but yeah, please support me. That's puts food on my table. So. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and by clarifying that, just to let you all know is that uh, Michael Chapman's services to you are free of charge. He, uh, Michael earns his, he's a broker, so he earns his living uh, with income coming from insurance companies. So uh, he offers his his advice, his services free to you. So I just want to clarify that. Yeah, and also whether or not you buy from me, uh, I'll still offer advice. But if you're in the market, I <laughs> I'd appreciate the phone call. <laughs> yeah. as, as you can see, this is this is getting murkier all the time and yeah. more confusing and i expect by you know this is the second uh webinar i've given in the past two months i fully expect there will be another one in a couple of months where there will be further changes and is there anybody that is an hr uh, put a one in the chat let's see what comes up yeah all right, I think I've made it through all of the questions okay. in the chat window that I could see. If there are any, if, if I missed one or something, either please uh, take yourself off of mute and ask the question or retype it into the chat box, please. Any additional questions for Mike?
I have a question. Sure. So uh, Mike had mentioned that uh, for 50 plus, there are different tax credits. Now in my family, I am not 50 and my husband is. Does it make a difference or? I let me, it doesn't. It, let me clarify that. Uh, the tax credit is based on your, uh, your 2021 adjusted household, your household adjusted gross income, okay? You, your spouse, even if you have a child, whatever they, whatever you, your household earns in total, uh, that's what the tax credit is based on. However, there is now additional tax credits. Now, the insurance premiums are age-based. So the, and not gender-based, they're age-based, age and zip code. So the older you are, you know, like somebody that's 20 years old is going to pay a lot less than somebody that's 60 years old. So the tax credits are indexed by age as well. So you'll be eligible for a larger tax credit to help pay your higher premium if you're 60 years old than if you're 20 years old. But it's also based on your income. Again, it's it's murky. It's uh, difficult, but with a five-minute phone call. I'll get the information. I'll, I'll make it, you know, as clear as day in terms of hard numbers to, to discuss. But it's, you know, th I threw a lot at you guys and ladies in a short period of time. Uh, and hopefully you'll see that this is, this is a great benefit for job seekers to be able to take advantage of. But don't rush off and do stuff without, you know, giving it some thought, making sure that you, you heard it. And uh, you heard it from somebody that knows the stuff and will go back and get to specifics. Yeah. I'd have another couple. So uh, one person is saying, just, so just to confirm, if you were laid off in 2020, you are not eligible for COBRA reimbursement for the next few months. That's correct. That's correct. And then uh, we have one here. So if you land a job and get company provided plans, do you have to pay back? what you received as credits in 21 taxes? Great, great question. I didn't go through some of the basics just because of the amount of time. But yeah, if you end up making more than you estimated, and it could be from a job, it could be from an inheritance, it could be from uh, you won the lottery, then you're, it, you, you estimate your income for the year, and that's what your tax credit is based on, your estimate. However, how much you get to keep of that or whether you get more is based on what you actually earn in 2021 at the end of the year. Uh, but if you end up having to pay some of it back, there is no penalty and there is no interest. So at the worst case, you can look at it as an interest-free loan that keeps your cash flow down. Just know that you don't want to have, you when you land a job, you don't want to forget about that, that you may have to pay some of that tax credit back. But again, no penalty, no interest, but you don't want to forget about it. And it's not when you earn, it's not when you land a job. There could be uh, the two month waiting period beyond that. So you may have to keep the coverage in place until you're eligible for the employer's health health plan. All right. Uh, any other questions for Mike? Well, Mike, you said that you were recording this, and so if people wanted to uh, revisit your presentation, you uh, you mentioned, uh, are, are you going to have it out? Are you saving it someplace where people can walk through the slides again? Or Yeah, why don't I do this? Uh, uh, what I'll do is I'm, uh, I'm, at, I'm between airports. I'm going to have some time in right. Charlotte, but it's called rendering. So uh, I render this video, and then I compress it. And then I'll upload it to YouTube, and I'll send it to um, uh, send it out to the group. I'll, yeah, I'll send it to you, Clayton, so you can yeah. send it out to people. Right, to right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Yeah, now I will. Uh, I will send it to everyone who signed up for this meeting today. Great. All right. Any other questions before we let Mike uh, have some of his? Quiet time before he gets on his next flight. <laughs> All 
All right. Well, Mike, I, I really appreciate you taking time, especially in the middle of trying to get from one from point A to point B, taking time out to uh, share your time and expertise with us on something that, that is as, as important as this. So we really, really appreciate uh, your time. Pleasure is all mine. Thanks so much for the opportunity. And uh, anything I can do to help, just let me know. All right. We appreciate Take it. Take care. All right. Well, thank you, Mike.